For those of you who have class with me, I want to provide some general feedback on how you can create an ePortfolio. This is specific for those who are pursuing a BA in English language teaching. As we've talked about in class, I am suggesting to everyone to maintain one personal professional ePortfolio throughout your throughout the BA. So whenever you're creating, let's say, essays, maybe it's from a teaching practicum class, maybe you have a, an audio or video of your practice or your reflection. Think of your ePortfolio as a space where you are demonstrating your knowledge, your understandings, your skills, and your values or overall your disposition, your, your attitude as a professional. But the ePortfolio really is a space for you to add to your online space, create these artifacts so that when you graduate, you not only have your uh, resume, but you also have an ePortfolio that you can demonstrate and show, uh, again, what you know, what you can do, and your values. So today I want to give some general feedback, some group feedback, after having looked at uh, various ePortfolios so far in this uh, semester. Today is October 16th, 2022. We have completed uh, basically eight weeks, actually more, uh, 10 weeks at the time of this recording of your coursework. We'll evaluate again your ePortfolio at the end of the semester. But I wanted to provide some general group feedback and show some examples as to what I think makes a good ePortfolio. So, a professional ePortfolio for the English language instructor includes number one, an ePortfolio published in English. So because we are demonstrating what we know, what we can do, our understandings of different topics, because this is designed specifically for the English language instructor, we want to make sure that all of the content throughout the ePortfolio is published in English. Now, some of you may be beginning with a template that comes with the website that you have chosen for your ePortfolio. So a lot of times this is just a matter of going in and removing any extraneous information. Maybe there's a, a, an image or some stock text that is included, and even perhaps the overall template is in a particular language other than English. So it might, you might need to either figure out a way to set it up in English from by default or simply go in and make those changes as needed. So a, an ePortfolio includes only content or artifacts created by you, the instructor, with no extraneous information left over from the template, as I mentioned before. So... Uh, again, it's nice to start with a template because it gives you an overall design. It gives you a, a way to easily get started with publishing your artifacts. But in most cases, it's going to require us to go in and remove some of those, um, some of the information that really doesn't pertain to our own ePortfolio. An ePortfolio should include a dedicated homepage with personal information that you the learner, the teacher, feels comfortable sharing to the public. So here are some things that I would suggest to that you could include and perhaps some things that you probably don't want to include. I think it's a good idea to include a professional picture of yourself. It really personalizes your space and also your full name. Now, you could also include, along with the full name, the name that you like to go by. So that's, I think, uh, two, three things that you could include. The image, the full name, and maybe the name you go by. Maybe a famous quote uh, that's a, a nice touch to have on your opening uh, page. Some kind of educational quote that has some kind of significance or meaning for you. Maybe it relates to your own philosophy on teaching or on life in general. Um, remember that this space is a professional space, so you don't want to include anything that, that you might, let's say, share on Facebook or Instagram 
This is more related to you as a professional. And remember that the idea being here that a director, a principal of a school um, that is interested in looking for someone to for a teaching position will want to see this information, this space. So you don't want to include anything that you might later feel embarrassed about. And so try to keep that in mind. Uh, you might also have some kind of introduction. Now, the introduction, you might have the purpose of the space. So what's the reason for having this e-portfolio? Uh, my next point relate, is kind of related to the, the main page, and that is you might also want to have a separate About Me page. So in the main page, the initial page that takes the user to your space should be fairly brief. It shouldn't have a lot of information, but again, an image, your full name, the fam a famous quote, maybe explain the purpose of the page, and that's probably it. Maybe some other visual information. But if you have a separate page, a dedicated page for About Me, you could include things like your educational philosophy or a way to contact you or perhaps a link to a, um, a maybe an online resume. Okay, in addition to maybe a resume that you print out, Having, for example, a profile in LinkedIn is a good way to offer an online, um, an online resume along with using LinkedIn perhaps for seeking jobs. Um, and if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, I think it's worth taking a look at and seeing if that is something that you want to subscribe to uh, as many businesses look online to uh, look for potential employees or teachers. So an e-portfolio should also include artifacts, things that you create that you've completed in your coursework throughout the BA. Now, depending on the class, you might be given specific instructions on what to include for a particular class. But remember that the idea with an e-portfolio is that you also take some of the decisions in terms of what types of work that you create and bring it into your own e-portfolio. Perhaps it's not even a, a requirement for a class, but it's something that you're proud of. It's a, a good example or a good demonstration of what you've learned in a particular area. Remember in the BA, we have a lot of aspects of what is knowledge, what are your understandings about being a good teacher. Some of it is just to demonstrate your English proficiency level. Another perhaps is related to applied linguistics, your, your knowledge and understanding of certain top, uh, themes and topics or keywords related to applied linguistics. Maybe it's related to just teaching theory. Perhaps it's a demonstration of what you've done in some of your practicum classes. So think of those four strands in terms of different examples of work that you've created that you might include in your e-portfolio, again, whether or not it's an actual requirement for a particular class. A, a good e-portfolio should include artifacts that are, for the most part, embedded within the e-portfolio and not external to the e-portfolio. So let me give you some examples. If you create a video, one option, and I think a viable option here is to create a video and upload it to YouTube. You can decide if you want to publish that YouTube to the public or if you want to keep it unlisted so that only those with the link are able to access that video. Regardless, you could, in most cases, embed the video so that when you go into your own ePortfolio, the user doesn't have to go to YouTube to watch the video. He or she can actually watch the YouTube video within the ePortfolio. The idea here is to try to find ways of including documents, text, videos, and audios that are within the ePortfolio space. That is, they're embedded and the user doesn't have to leave your space. Okay, that's ideal so that they, it's, it's just easier to access that information. So 
there are times, for example, when you create an essay that instead of, let's say, uploading a PDF or including a link to a PDF, that you just take the text itself from the essay and create a page. Okay, In most cases, you can create a page with text uh, in your ePortfolio, and that's going to be the recommended way usually to include, let's say, uh, an essay or any kind of text that you've created. Maybe it's even a reflection. Um, a presentation, you might also find ways to embed a presentation. And I'm thinking like a slide share. If you go to slide share, there are ways to, I think, embed uh, that information. If you're using Google Sites, uh, it's very easy to embed you know, slides and, and, sh and uh, sheets and documents within the space. So again, the idea here is that it pops up automatically all this information. So it's very, it's very uh, easy to access. It's very quick. And again, the user doesn't have to jump around to different pages to access that work. Now, in our case, and uh, some of you are creating videos that you're uploading to stream, that is to um, to Microsoft uh, Microsoft Teams or Office 365 uh, service. We're using a, a different. We have different ways of creating and, and publishing videos and audios. And my suggestion would be to, for the most part, try to avoid that. Only because the idea with the portfolio is that this is. This is going to be a, a space that you're going to continue to contribute to even beyond your, uh, your university experience. When you get into the field, you've graduated from the university, the idea is as you continue to improve your knowledge and understandings and skill sets, that you continue to add to your e-portfolio throughout your entire professional career so that you have, again, this evidence that you can provide and share as you are um, as you are maybe looking for new jobs or maybe even exchange programs, any kind of professional opportunities that come your way, you're going to benefit from having an e-portfolio that you have kept up to date that changes as you develop as, as a professional. All right, so an e-portfolio should also include artifacts on dedicated pages, as opposed to having, let's say, several artifacts that appear on a single page. So in some cases, I see the home page, for example, with all of the products, all of the artifacts on a single page, and the user has to scroll from top to bottom all the way down one single page to view a lot of information. So ideally, each artifact will be on its separate page. It'll have a separate page that the user can access and look at very easily without having to scroll too much down the page. It's okay if you have to scroll down a little bit depending on the length of the page, let's say an essay. But perhaps we don't want to have two or three essays or paragraphs all in one in one page, maybe we want to use, let's say, a menu system with dedicated pages. And again, most of the templates that you find, you're going to have already set up automatically a fairly logical and attractive looking menu system that you can add pages to and really organize your, your ideas and your artifacts in a way that it uh, makes it just a little bit easier to find for the user. So try to avoid having too many artifacts on a single page. An ePortfolio should also include a font that's easy to read. Now I've included a link here, but I've listed some of some fonts that are easy to read. We don't want to get too fancy with the fonts. And again, really, it, it should just be easy to read. And, and that's really the goal for choosing the font. I also probably would be fairly consistent with the type of font that you're using, that you're not changing the fonts too much throughout your ePortfolio. Now, 
again, the templates are going to help you in this regard. For, mo for the most part, most of the fonts that come with these templates are going to be just fine. They're going to be uh, easy to read for the most part. But again, I've included a link or yeah, a, li a list and a link of different fonts that you want to check out uh, if you're uh, not sure if it's easy to read. Now, related to whether or not a font is easy to read, we have to also consider color contrast of the font. That is the color of the font itself versus the color of the background. So make sure you have good color contrast so that it doesn't hinder one's ability to read your text. Again, most templates, you're probably going to be fine. What happens, the, the trouble we get into is when we start changing colors ourselves. And that's usually when we run into problems. The ePortfolio should also include a logical navigational menu system that makes it easy to find artifacts. So again, this is what I mentioned earlier. There should be a good menu system that allows someone that's it going into your ePortfolio for the first time, they're able to navigate and find information. Now I have some examples that I want to share with you. And in this first example, right away, uh, it's easy to read. We have the person's full name, a, kind of a welcome message here. We have a picture of the person, and in this case, an educational philosophy. Now, one thing I didn't mention that is very important, especially when we are looking at the home page, is that, that there is some information that we'd like to include, but there's also information that perhaps we, we shouldn't or don't want to include. And some of the things that I would not include would be your phone number, an email, your student ID, whether the student ID is in the URL itself. Sometimes students will make the mistake of setting up a URL with your student ID, and I would suggest not doing that. And again, you don't want to share anything that you don't feel comfortable sharing, but I think your full name and your, an image of yourself is uh, something that I, I would include. Now, as I mentioned before, th in this case, uh, the person has chosen to include the educational philosophy here, which is a good choice. Remember also that you could have an About Me page that also has information about you where perhaps an educational philosophy could also appear. This is a personal choice, whether you want to have a separate page called About Me that is about you, or if you want to include that same information on the home page. But notice that's basically it. Okay, maybe there's a, a way to contact the person here, but that's it. There's really there are really no artifacts in the home page. And I think that's a good choice because as we go in our menu system, as we follow through the menu system, we now see different pages and sub pages that allow the user to very quickly find different, in this case, artifacts. Okay, so in this case, the user has decided, the learner has decided to include a page for one, two different classes. And each of those classes has different products. So you can easily go and notice that all the information is in this one space. That is, I don't have to open up a PDF. I don't have to click a link to get that information somewhere else. Notice that the video is embedded, so I don't have to go to another page or open up another tab to watch the video. It's all embedded. Uh, in this case, there's a reflection. So again, everything is self-contained. Everything is within this space. I don't have to exit the ePortfolio to access the artifacts. Okay, another presentation. Another video embed. So whether you embed a video, an audio, even a presentation, there are ways to embed presentations so that, again, the presentation itself is within the ePortfolio. Okay, so this is a good example. Another good example here, again, we have a picture. We have some kind of welcome, an introduction of some kind. Again, here you could also include the purpose. Okay, what's the purpose of this essay? I'm sorry, this ePortfolio. Again, good navigation uh, tactics here. We have 
the name of the class and then easily we can go to and open up. Now here's a, another approach here. We've got a embedded, this is an example of an embedded, let's say survey or quiz in this case. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. This is good because it's within the ePortfolio. We don't have to go to open up a separate tab. The only hesitation I would have here, the only suggestion I would make is think long term. Always think long term. And if this space, if this form is associated with a school, let's say a school account, in, in the case of Microsoft 365, realize that your school account will probably not last forever. And so at some point, maybe not now, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but at some point, you're going to be graduating from the university. And you're going to have, maybe you have videos, audio files, maybe you have documents, maybe you have presentations, maybe you have forms that are within an Office 365 account that is part of a university account that perhaps you lose access to at some point. So because this ePortfolio is meant to be long-term, it's really meant to be started in, when you, as you're in the university, but really it should carry on and basically uh, be something that you contribute to throughout your whole professional career. That is, when you are in the field, you've finished your studies, and you are continuing to increase your knowledge and understanding and your skill set, you want to keep contributing to the portfolio so that you, know, you are keeping it up to date so that whenever you do need to share it with, let's say, a potential employer or maybe some kind of an exchange program or maybe even further uh, academic pursuits like a master's degree or a doctorate degree, again, the portfolio is going to serve you well in demonstrating what you know, what you can do, and your overall disposition. But again, very good navigation here, and uh, it's as much as you can include in the ePortfolio it's, uh, itself, the better. Okay, again, in terms of text, video, presentations, and, and just having text within each of these. Okay, this is an example of text that it's not, a, it's not a PDF, it's not a document per se, it's just text within a page in the ePortfolio. And this is a good approach, is to have the text itself. It has good contrast, it's easy to read, and it's all within the document itself. It's not a separate document. It's not a, a, a Word doc, for example, or it's not a PDF. Okay, so another good example. Here's another good example. Good, uh, uh, again, we have a, a good image. We have an introduction or about me. So this is a very good, notice that there's not a lot of information here but in the home page, but it's a dedicated home page that uh, offers just a general introduction to the ePortfolio. And then a navigational system here that takes the user directly to the, the work. Always make sure you check your spelling whenever you upload any kind of artifacts. Um, and, you know, in this case, again, if you have article reviews, for example, maybe you have a separate page for each article review, but again, a good choice of keeping everything within the, the page, within the space. Okay, and let's look at one more example. Okay, so again, we have a home page. We have the image, good introduction, educational philosophy, statement of purpose. So just general information about the person's, uh, the person's outlook. And, and then a navigational system that takes the user to uh, to the information, um, 
again, in this case, very good uh, overall presentation. I, I think having individual artifacts on separate pages and having a good navigational system that takes the user throughout the ePortfolio, I think is the what I would consider uh, just a kind of good ePortfolio practice. There, there are still a lot of ways that you can tailor this to your own liking and design this based on how you know how you want your artifacts to be presented to the public but you it just needs to be easy for one to find the information and again as much as you can include in the ePortfolio I think the better so I hope this helps some just general tips on what to consider as we are currently in the middle of a fall semester We'll have another opportunity. I'll be taking another look at your ePortfolio at the end of the semester. So please take into consideration uh, this information here that I'm sharing with you. And of course, if you have any questions, and especially if you have technical issues about how to uh, modify or work in your uh, spaces, in your with your ePortfolio, these are things that we can certainly address in class. Or of course. May uh, you can schedule time with me to meet and discuss your issues one-on-one. -on -one. So I hope this helps and uh, I'll see everybody in class.